Welcome to the Modern Savvy CPA, where financial expertise meets the cutting edge of digital age. I'm Sharon, your host, a certified public accountant, here to guide you through the intricate web of numbers and regulations, offering a fresh perspective of the ever-evolving world of finance. Today, we're going to continue our series in um, bad money habits that business owners have that, that is impacting their, um, their business profitability. We want to make sure that um, we are thinking and looking at the different trends and understanding our business better. So what my job is when it comes to financial literacy, financial education is to get you guys thinking, whether it's in your business life, your children's life, your personal personal life, your retirement life, to get you thinking in these different aspects. So send timely invoices and proactive reminders for your payments. I love my job, but one of the things I hate doing is billing. But you have to make sure you're consistent with your billing. It's one of the things we despise doing, but we got to get paid to live. We got to get paid to run our business. So you want to make sure that you are consistently billing. You're doing it on a consistent basis. You know, for example, during tax season, I have to bill more often because, you know, I have smaller clients that when the return is finished, I bill them. Usually I do monthly billing. So I can't wait until the end of the month during tax season. So you have to understand what your build your billing situation is and prioritizing your billing. Make sure that you are proactive with reminders. Reminders are really, really important. With today's society, we have, you know, ACH payment. So that's really easy to, for your clients to pay you that way or credit card or everything electronic. So that's an easy thing to do with our accounting systems these days, sending an email reminder, a text reminder, you know, whatever kind of reminders. Sometimes people get busy and they forget. So the reminders are really good to make sure that you're getting in your payments on time, you know. Check your suppliers to see if there are discounts for paying early or, you know, what kind of discounts that they can give you. Ensure that, you know, there are no barriers in payments such as invoices error or delayed billing and things like that. You want to make sure that you're reading what your bills are. I mean, this happens to people all the time. They just pay the bill and they don't read the bill. There are many times for us where the mistakes are made on the bills. We got to make sure that we are not wasting money that way because even when it comes to our individual bill, billing, our individual finance, a lot of us these days, we just pay it, we pay our cable bill, we pay our phone bill, we pay everything, and we're not looking at it to see if it's correct. So, you know, you want to make sure you're periodically looking at that so you're not wasting money and that doesn't eat into your cash flow system. You want to make sure that you have a process to avoid your delays or any errors to, you know, so you are consistently looking at that. Make sure your payment system is convenient. So like I said, the electronic payments, the emails, you know, nobody sends a bill in the mail anymore, or maybe there is people, but I don't know any of them. Um, but you know, online payment methods, you know, having multiple payment methods is important. So these are all continue with things that would help you with your accounts receivable and accounts payable, you know, um, defined when you need to collect your cash, you know, and make sure that you're following the terms of that, you know, when it's possible, calculate your payments terms on your invoice and put the dates in, put what dates are due. So you want to make sure that you have due dates on there. You want to make sure you have reminders so that your cash flow is, is consistent and, and, and you're getting paid you know, within a certain amount of time, review your accounts receivable, you know, all the time. I review my accounts receivable every week. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. Some people might need to do it more. Some people might need to do it less. So that's one of the things you need to be reviewing. How much invoices do I have outstanding to get paid? Do I need to send a reminder to certain people? Do I need to send a text reminder? Do I need to send a phone reminder, depending on what it is? Do I need to work on a payment plan with somebody? Sometimes, you know, you have a large invoice and your clients can't pay it all at once, so they don't pay any of it. You might want to give them an option. Okay, I'm going to divide this bill into three, po three parts. Please make a payment. Or maybe I'll ACH, you know, send you an ACH and 
agreement to say, okay, if I divide this bill into three parts, I'm going to automatically take it out of your bank account on the 15th of such month. So then it's easier for them. They don't forget. And you're able to set that up within your accounting system. You know, bookkeeping is such an important thing. So you would be able to review your accounts receivable. If your bookkeeping is not organized and everything is not um, together, you will not be able to know how much money you're owed out there. You know, there's going to be things that are, that, are, that are not done properly out there. The other thing that I noticed is checking. When you deposit a check, I've noticed this with several clients who do not have organized bookkeeping. They deposit checks remotely with their with pictures and they pay their invoices within their system but they do not check to see if the check is in the bank now when i look at their accounting and i'm trying to organize their stuff i'm like wait a minute you know i've seen this so many times where they're losing thousands of dollars because they thought they deposited a check there they don't reconcile their bank account so they have no idea that the check has was was not actually deposited for whatever reason and they didn't check their bank account to see that the check actually went in there because if you're not reconciling your bank account you don't know that if you if you paid this accounts receivable on your account is it did it go straight through to the bank so that's what where good bookkeeping comes in and you want to make sure you're doing that you know you want you want to have a good credit control system you know to making sure that you're paying your bills on time because your business is its own entity and it has its own tax ID number and having good credit is just as important for your business for longevity as it is for you. So you want to make sure that, you know, you, you, you're, you're doing that properly and your credit co control system is good. You know, when it comes to your profits, you know, if your cash is king, then you need to make sure that, you know, you're, you're paying attention to your cash and you're putting in it and you're focusing on it. You know, make sure that you have you, you use your cash flow system to forecast what your cash flow is going to be, you know, so that you understand what the issues are going to be in advance. And, you know, you can probably poke, you know, fill some of those holes if you know there's nothing better than a plan. If you have a plan, you're not going to be surprised at stuff. Yes, plans do not 100% work out the way it's supposed to, but you have plan A, plan B, plan C, and it always flows into things. Most of my life, of course, I've been surprised at things. There's things that happen, but I always have a plan. No matter what it is that I'm doing, I always have a plan. I will tell you that most of my life, the plans never work out 100% the way I plan it. But having a plan lessens my anxiety, helps me to, to understand what's happening in my business world, my business life, my children's life, college, these things, so that I understand if even if it doesn't work out that way, then okay, I can move on to the next thing. But I have a guideline. A plan to me is a guideline. A guideline is important because then when you're surprised, you know, you you uh, you can mitigate the surprises, you know, so you can when you're going in through it. So, you know, you want to be able to reasonably grow your business. You want to be able to to understand um you don't want to have um, bad business practice. You want to be able to pay your staff on time, pay for your materials on time, pay your stuff on time. And having a good cash flow system definitely helps you with that. You know, beyond those basics, companies should develop. Don't forget to develop your, your, your forecast. And a lot of times you can develop your, your forecast with your historical numbers and your current performances. So you, you, you don't start ever with a clean slate you start with a template there's no reason to reinvent a wheel when it comes to finances there's so many different templates it's it's all basically the same information is just what can what is the information that that works for you the cash flow statement starts with a template then you put in what is customized to your field what is customized to your business and you work with that you start with your outline your outline is your template and you work within that so you don't ever have to start from scratch when it comes to accounting when it comes to budgeting when it comes to financial literacy it, you don't want to reinvent the wheel you want to use the things that are out there to help you maximize your profits you know that's the key. Like we've talked about before, that 
I my goal is not to teach you how to make more revenues in your companies. That's your job. You're good at your trade. You're good at what you're doing. You're good at your business. You're likely loving the things that you went out to do on your business. You're likely really, really good at it. That is probably not your problem. Your problem is maximizing your profits. So the revenues that you're bringing in, you know how to work that. You're the one that started this business. That's the part that you need to be looking at. I cannot help you with that part. But what I can help you with is analyzing what you're bringing in, analyzing what you're spending. What are you doing? Is it, is it, is it working for you? Is it, are you using your money wisely? You know, are you using smart money habits and getting rid of all of those pitfalls with the bad money habits? You know, cause we have bad money habits. We just need to replace them with the smart money habits. So that's my job is for you to help you give you the tools, give you the knowledge, give you the information so that you can start using smart money habits to start working smart within working hard, you know? So, com you know, all these strategies will help you to maximize your liquidity. And liquidity is the most important word when you're talking about cash flow. Maximizing your liquidity, what does that mean? M maximizing the amount of cash that you have to work with. Maximizing you know, your, 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 your cash flow statement and your, the cash that you have understanding your business, making sure that it flows nicely and you're not stuck with too little money. And you're making sure that you're investing properly when it comes to your emergency fund or other excess funds that you do have within your business. You know, if you're planning to grow or you're planning to buy real estate within your business, you want to make sure that you have that goal pot as part of your business too. So those are the things that you need to be looking at. And are you investing that goal pot at the rate of inflation or above? So these are all different things that you need to understand when you're understanding cash flow. This is the Modern Savvy CPA, and this is all about liquidity. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, feel free to give me a follow to get updated on new and upcoming episodes and listen in every Tuesday and Thursday where I teach you smart money habits so you can make better money choices with a financial goal focus.